the one thing which I've learned from my training, which I think is really valuable, is basically text, like the words being central to everything. Claire Ward is a classically trained opera singer. She also sings at church with me occasionally. Now I thought these two types of singing would be completely different. I was convinced one's a performance and the other isn't. So we sat down together and I asked her all about it. To my surprise, I was wrong. Opera singing and worship music are surprisingly similar. How do you see the difference between what you do in your day job and singing here at church on a Sunday? It's a very different setup because in the singing that I normally do, I don't use amplification. So we don't use a microphone and uh, we work on like the resonances that we've spent years trying to train. Um, and I sing at a much higher range normally. Mm-hmm. Uh, whereas at church it will be lower, a lot of it would be in my chest voice and we have the microphone, which is great. It's like very relaxing, yeah. singing with the microphone. A lot of the performing work I do is from memory, so that immediately adds another level of stress um, and a diff- it requires a different type of focus. Okay. The role at church is to, we were talking about it, facilitate the congregation to sing so you're not standing up to show to demonstrate your singing you're trying to sing to encourage others to sing but you're also playing a role in communicating a message to them and that's the part that's actually quite similar to classical singing they're more similar than i realized basically tell me why they're similar yeah because because the the purpose of a being a performer is to, to give messages to people in yeah. in a new make them think about something in a new light or or just offer them a time to reflect, or to, enter, of course, to entertain them and take them on a journey. But even then, you're telling them a story and you want them to be moved by this story. And I kind of think at, at church, the, the, the purpose is, is similar, except that the people join in in the music making with you. Is there anything that you think people who sing at the front of church could learn from a classically trained singer? The one thing which I've learned from my training, which I think is really valuable, is basically text, like the words are being central to everything. The music is kind of superfluous and the text is the purpose. When you take it from that approach, I think it makes everything make more sense more quickly, musically Mm. as well. And the structure of a piece would make more sense, like where it's going to be the most strong moment and where's the most tender moment and if you just look at the words maybe before you listen to the song which we never do but Mm -hmm. you know in Mm -hmm. an ideal world that would be Mm. a nice kind of thing I think to take across from classical singing into this kind of worship music yeah yeah it sounds like if you like have to memorize the words because you've not got the music in front of you or you've had to translate them and you've written them down a hundred times. <laughs> it sounds like you've kind of marinated in them so much yeah. more so you kind of understand what the music because of that um, and it affects the way that, you, way that you sing. You're right, I don't often spend that much time I'm looking at the words before I sing the songs that I'm going to sing, not because I don't think the words are important. I think yeah. the words are very important. Yeah, but just we, not put, in we that, put them together. I'm not in that habit of, of doing that. That's interesting. Also, in, sometimes in worship music as well, people breathe in the middle of a word, which Oof. in classical singing is like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Where do you breathe? The punctuation. <laughs> yeah, you breathe as you would speak. Yeah. It's just different, but also the same. <laughs> same, same, but different. Um, this is good, yeah. I, it's I, really interesting. I, I think I... Um, can change the video it's great uh, Sorry. <laughs> no it's good there's uh, the similarities between it just really struck op- me opera singing and yeah. singing at church go on can I ask a question yeah I'm re- really interested in when you're talking about like kind of portraying a message and like telling a story I'm assuming not many musicians at church think about they're telling a story through their singing so like are there techniques or things that classical musicians do to help help tell that story and could any of them apply in church so I think one of the helpful things is and this is like a bit of a strange thing probably to do if you've never done it before but like to practice speaking the words as if you are speaking them presenting them just yeah Yeah. or just speaking them like normally so not in a not in any kind of rhythm of the music but just get to the end of the sentence as you would in your normal rhythm of speech that's really helpful because then you understand like the intonation of the sentence and what words are the words that we would naturally bring out and they're not always what's 
like out in the music. Um, so that's helpful. And also then when you're actually doing it, I think having the images in your head as you're singing, obviously it depends what you're singing specifically, but if you can kind of put yourself into the situation in your mind, mm. then it's, it's just acting. But then I don't really think we should be acting in church. It feels then artificial. But maybe just in church, you just immerse yourself in the text yourself. Mm. And that is enough because people were drawn in and want to be part of that. Yeah, I mean, I, I sing the words I sing at church because I, I believe them. I believe them to be true. And I, I, love, I love what I'm singing about God or what I'm singing about what Jesus has done. So I think there is a, there's yeah. a element of that, like, because I am part of, I'm part of those words. Um. But that's it, and that's natural, and that's already there. And I think the difference then maybe in classical singing is you sometimes have to put yourself in the feet of something that you don't believe in, or a character who's mm -hmm. 50 years your senior, or a man, yeah. or, you know, and, and that's the different challenge, I suppose. I thought it would be helpful for me sometimes to memorise the words that we're singing um, at church because yeah, it would help me not just to look at my music but look up and see the mm. people around me. Is there like a trick to memorising words? Is that something I, I could... I think there's lots of tricks. Okay, tell yeah. me. <laughs> what are the tricks? Um, I mean, my favourite trick, it's not a very exciting trick, is just to write it out, okay. but like lots of times. Uh, I also actually find it harder to memorise English words so when we sing in another language, you've done so much like work on the text of translating it, working out how to pronounce it, that you've kind of memorized it in the process. Whereas English, you tend to put a little bit less effort in because you know what it means, mm -hmm. or you think you know what it means. And therefore, it kind of takes longer to sink in. Um, but yeah, I write it out, I listen to it, I speak it. So you speak the words without the music mm -hmm. or without the rhythm of the music. What's the best compliment that someone could give you after one of your shows? It would have nothing to do with my singing. Mm -hmm. That's, uh, here we are, there's a similarity. So using the, the voice just being, the voice is just the tool and it's not you. So the voice is basically the tool between the music and the people. It's not about the, the singer. In classical singing, we spend a lot of time fixating on the sound we're making, which is really counterproductive because your voice is like 100% connected to how you're feeling. So if you're focusing on the sound you're making, you're like naturally stressing a bit about the sound and then the sound is gonna be worse. So, so as soon as you can switch your mind onto something else, like what am I singing about? Your singing becomes freer and more natural and easier and better. Obviously singing is in the Bible everywhere, but there was one particular bit that said something about singing with skill, I'd love to find it rather than just talk it. Psalm 33, it. sing to him a new song, play skillfully and yeah. shout for joy. But play skillfully was the one that, that rung to me because that, that made me think, okay, good. So all this time I'm putting into trying to be better at classical singing is worth it. You know, it, feels, it is what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm. Basically, every classical musician should be made to sing it, where she needs it. You reckon? Yeah. <laughs> That initiation. <laughs> Maybe that could be your thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so grateful to Claire for agreeing to have a chat with me. If you enjoyed this interview, then I've made some more and you can watch them here. Make sure you check out Claire's website, it's in the link in the description below, and follow her on Instagram and Twitter as well.